The Panama Canal is one of the most remarkable engineering feats of the modern era. Connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans through a narrow isthmus in Central America, it has been the backbone of global trade for more than a century. But today, questions are being raised about its future. The canal faces challenges it wasn't built to handle. Its locks, once considered marvels of innovation, now seem limited in a world of ever-larger ships and increasing demand for faster, more efficient shipping routes. This is the story of the race to find alternatives. Why are nations and companies looking to replace or complement the Panama Canal, and what options are on the table? When the Panama Canal opened in 1914, it revolutionized maritime trade. Ships no longer had to take the long and dangerous route around Cape Horn at the southern tip of South America. The canal cut thousands of miles off voyages and saved weeks of travel time. But the canal was built with the ships of the early 20th century in mind. Over time, the size of cargo ships grew dramatically, and by the 1980s, many vessels were too large to pass through the original locks. In 2016, the Panama Canal underwent a major expansion, adding a new set of locks known as the Neo-Panamax locks. These larger locks could accommodate ships carrying up to 14,000 containers, nearly three times the capacity of the older locks. The expansion was a success, but even this upgrade has limitations. Today, the largest ships, known as ultra-large container vessels, can carry over 24,000 containers. These giants of the sea cannot pass through the Panama Canal, even with the expanded locks. The challenges facing the canal aren't just about ship size. There are also delays. On busy days, ships can wait for over a week to transit, costing shipping companies millions of dollars. And then, there's the issue of water. The Panama Canal relies on fresh water to operate its locks. Each time a ship passes through, millions of gallons of water are drained into the ocean. In recent years, water levels in the reservoirs that feed the canal have dropped significantly, making it harder to keep the locks operational. All these factors have prompted governments, companies, and engineers to ask a bold question. What if there was another way? One of the most ambitious proposals for an alternative is the Nicaragua Canal. This project envisions a massive waterway cutting across Nicaragua, from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific. The idea of a Nicaraguan canal is not new. In fact, it was considered in the 19th century before the Panama route was chosen. But in recent years, the concept gained renewed attention. In 2013, a Chinese company announced plans to build the Nicaragua Canal, with an estimated cost of $50 billion. The proposed canal would be over 170 miles long, far longer than the Panama Canal, and deep enough to handle the largest ships in the world. Supporters of the project argue that it could transform global shipping, offering a second option for vessels traveling between the Atlantic and Pacific. However, the project has faced significant challenges. For one, the financial backing has been uncertain. Critics have questioned whether the Chinese company behind the proposal has the resources to complete such a massive undertaking. There have also been concerns about the environmental impact, as the proposed route would cut through sensitive ecosystems and communities. As of today, construction has not begun, and the future of the Nicaragua Canal remains uncertain. Another alternative to the Panama Canal is not a canal at all, but a route through the Arctic. As ice has melted in the northern regions, new shipping lanes have opened up during certain parts of the year. These routes, such as the Northern Sea Route along Russia's Arctic coast, could significantly shorten the distance between Europe and Asia. The potential of Arctic shipping is clear. For example, a journey from Shanghai to Rotterdam via the Northern Sea Route is about 30% shorter than traveling through the Panama Canal. This could save weeks of travel time and reduce costs for shipping companies. Additionally, vessels traveling the Arctic routes avoid congestion at traditional choke points like the Suez or Panama Canals, where delays can be costly. The Northern Sea Route also offers an advantage for bulk carriers transporting commodities such as liquefied natural gas, LNG, oil, and minerals. With Arctic nations like Russia investing heavily in ice-class tankers and specialized infrastructure, some industries view the region as a strategic corridor for energy exports. However, Arctic shipping has its own challenges. The routes are only navigable for part of the year, typically from July to October, 
And even during this window, conditions can be unpredictable. Icebreaker escorts are often mandatory, which increases costs. Harsh weather, strong winds, and sudden ice movements make navigation hazardous, requiring highly skilled crews and specialized ships. Additionally, the infrastructure in the Arctic is minimal. There are few ports for refueling or repairs, and search and rescue capabilities remain limited in these remote areas. This lack of support infrastructure raises concerns about the risks of mechanical failures or accidents in such an unforgiving environment. Despite these hurdles, interest in Arctic shipping is growing. As nations and companies weigh the potential benefits against the risks, the Arctic could become a vital link in the global trade network for specific industries and routes. Closer to the Panama Canal, some have proposed new rail-based systems as an alternative. One idea involves building a dry canal across Central America. Instead of ships passing through locks, cargo containers would be unloaded from ships on one coast, transported by train to the other coast, and reloaded onto new ships. This concept is not entirely new. Similar systems already exist on a smaller scale, such as the land bridge between ports in southern Mexico. A large-scale dry canal could be faster and cheaper to build than a new waterway. However, it would require significant investment in rail infrastructure and might not appeal to shipping companies accustomed to the seamless transit offered by traditional canals. While these alternatives are being explored, the Panama Canal itself is not standing still. The Panama Canal Authority has been studying additional expansion projects, including the possibility of a fourth set of locks. These new locks would be even larger than the Neo Panamax locks, capable of handling the largest ships in the world. But such a project would take years to complete and require billions of dollars in investment. It would also need to address the canal's water supply issues, which remain one of its biggest vulnerabilities. The race to replace or complement the Panama Canal is not just about engineering. It's also about economics, geopolitics, and the future of global trade. Shipping is the lifeblood of the global economy, and the stakes are incredibly high. Whoever controls the major trade routes holds significant power and influence. This is why countries and companies are so eager to explore alternatives, even if those alternatives are costly and difficult to achieve. So, what does the future hold? Will a new canal rise to challenge the dominance of Panama? Will Arctic routes or rail systems change the way goods move across the world? For now, the Panama Canal remains the most important shortcut in global trade. But as the world changes, new paths may emerge. Paths that reshape the way goods, people and ideas move across our planet. The race to replace the Panama Canal is not just about solving logistical problems. It's about the next chapter in the story of human ingenuity and determination.